Hi, welcome to Piccadilly Talks. I'm your host, Angelique Vertu. Today, we're going to talk about parenting and the important role that parents have to play in the educational lives of their children to ensure optimal outcomes. To have that conversation with me today, I welcome Sharon Wheatle Redwood. Good day, how are you doing? I am awesome. I'm happy to have this conversation with you because I believe, I feel that my parents played a critical role in the positive outcomes that I've had in my educational career. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm not the exception, I'm actually the rule that it is important and that when parents play an active role, it works out better for the child. What say you? I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Um, I'm a mother of four, four children at different stages. So you know this is my life, right? For the last 19 years. And as you said that, that your parent played a critical role in your education journey, I was just thinking of my parents and that there are different kinds of things that different parents are going to bring to the table. You have some parents who are educated, they're sophisticated, they understand what to do. And you have some parents they don't know what to do, but they'll sit at the table in the night and say, look here, you make sure you do the homework. You get it right? Let me look at it. Don't understand a thing, you know, but say, yes, man, that look good. Just check it again. Either way, presence and Important. support is critical. Important. Talk to us now. Uh, you mentioned four children mm -hmm. at, at different levels. You are spanning tertiary, high school, and primary level sure. education for your children. When you think about the way you were involved in the uh, life of your tertiary student when he was at primary school mm -hmm. and the way you're involved in the primary school mm -hmm. age one now, yes. what are some of the differences? Wow, you know I like that. Mm. Let me tell you why. When my first son, Israel and Emmanuel, they were very close in age, so they were doing GSAT mm -hmm. at the time. I used to be so supportive because and that's something I need to let you know, boys, Tell us. Are different. Are they? From girls. Okay. On the education journey. Talk to us, Mr. So Wheatle you Redwood. better know how you do it. So I know my boys, bright boys, but if I'm not pushing them, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. Why do you think that happens? Because men end up in the leadership positions mm -hmm. after school is finished. Mm -hmm. But somehow during school, they're not the ones who are ahead of the girls. So what do you think from your vantage point is the reason for the that? The reason for that. Let me tell you. We have a culture where we love to talk, chalk, and talk. All right. Boys don't learn that way. I have a son, Emmanuel. If you sit him down in a classroom and to do that, him start walk up and down. But if he say, come, let's watch a YouTube video, um, convert this to a rap, he's good to go. They want to be involved. Yes, yes. They want to do. So you asked about the journey. So when my boys were in primary school and they were doing GSAT, I set up classroom for, the, for eight months in my living room. I converted my living room to an exam setting. All right. And I not only did my boys, but I had friends who had boys, so some invite over everybody. So there was a time about nine, nine um, boys and wow. girls too, mm -hmm. one or two girls. And we went through the past paper, we had discussion. My neighbor came who was an engineer and he talked talk about push-pull and him used mop stick to show right. it. Yes, Not the mop stick. <laughs> the mop stick <laughs> to show <laughs> how it was done. And mm. we worked every past paper. Wow. It worked for them. Tell us about the girls. Them. So my daughter now. Who, is, who, who are now who, the, She's primary. now in high school. All right. The difference. Yes, man. Pep. Um, pep. All right. So mm -hmm. first of all, the exam is different. Mm -hmm. So there was Pep. And I'm an educator at the university level, right? And I just draw a blank. Oh, no. When it came to the Pep. Because it was a different way of learning, the analyzing, the inferences, the... It was a different thing. So I could go and recall with the GSAT, but this wasn't happening with the paper. And so I had to pivot mm. and took a different approach. And this is it. Sometimes you have to ask for help. And so I had to go to the experts. There were persons who had online website, who were writing books. And so I had to draw for help. And so 
it's, it's, it's a different time. And even now with my daughter, I have to go for help. Mm. I have to go to those persons who are the experts. So even though I'm an educator, I forgot to put my education and my experience around there. So it's a different strategy, right? And so I have to go to persons who know what to do and how to do it. And that's the journey I'm walking now with my daughter, who is 11. It's remarkable that you make that point, uh, Miss Weasel Redwood, because so many parents think that if I don't have all the answers mm -hmm. uh, for my child, I'm failing as a parent. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. That is not true. What you do in those situations is you are a great parent when you ask for help. I did. And so love that you pivoted in that way and mm -hmm. didn't drop your hand. Get, frust get too frustrated, yes. but instead said, no, I, I am still parenting, even yeah. if I am not the one with all the answers. Correct. Love that for my unborn children. I'll and praise the, God. The lessons <laughs> that I and so many people will take, or persons who think, uh, you know, I don't have the answers, so I'm not a good mommy or I'm not a mm -hmm. good uh, daddy. Miss Wheatle Redwood says, no, you are. You probably just need some help. Yes. Uh, as you mentioned help and coordinating and asking for help, yes. parents work with the school system, with the teachers, mm -hmm. to ensure that outcome that you want. Yes. From your experience, how important is that relationship? I mm -hmm. want to tell you my experience first. It was very simple. Mm -hmm. Back in the 1700s when I went <laughs> to primary school, my mm -hmm. mother said, I only come to school for awards. All right, you better get some awards. And 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 and, and not to misrepresent mommy, but it was more like, I'm not coming up there. Mm -hmm. You must go to school and do the things. So she come to parent-teacher consultation, Good. prize giving, graduation, the important things. Mm -hmm. But outside of those things, that bring her joy and pride and not coming up there to your teacher for bad behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, that is not a, is not an option. Yeah. But when she did come for the positive things, for the, she never missed a consultation good, eh? and she knew my teachers mm -hmm. and she had conversations with them about my work and they formed this whole team <laughs> that I was like, the, the both of you know? Yes. But I, it worked. It mm -hmm. worked. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from way back then in the 1700s to now, do you think <laughs> the approach still has value that we have to form partnerships with our teachers to ensure our children? Certainly, it has values. And I'll let you know, when my children start, when they're at any school, everybody know Israel and Emmanuel's mother. The children know them, hi Israel mommy, hi so and so, because I am involved. First of all, I'm going to meet the class teacher. And I let them know, look here, while my children are here, I'm entrusting them to you. Let me tell you, if they slip up, I say you deal with it, you can call me at the back end. Mm. You, uh, we are here together. I am understanding where they are at, what they don't understand. And I said to the teacher, tell me how I can support you at home. Mm. So, my so daughter, you're not one of the mamas no. that say, think your children is perfect, so teacher mm -mm, can't mm -mm, discipline mm -mm, your children. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's, a, want, there's space for that. I want it to happen. I want them to feel free to discipline and then you call me at the back end and I will help. Wow. And so guess what? Normally the schools that my children go, all the teachers know me mm -hmm. and I am involved. I'm at PTA. Mm -hmm. conference if the school is having something read across Jamaica I'm taking a class and I'm reading across Jamaica you know Miss sweet Redwood yes I don't have <laughs> the time like you have to go to my school I send the picnic them go up there and mm -hmm. the, the teacher them and the teacher them get paid mm -hmm. for go to school for look after yes. my children I have to go to work I'm gonna come from work I have to work again and I have to make sure the house fix up and if I don't mm -hmm. go home and cook dinner the picnic them not have no dinner mm -hmm. so where should I find the time how do I wrap my mind around already sacrificing so much to send them to school and yeah tell me say me no must physically go to the school the mm. teachers need to know who i am mm. how does a parent who has that as their circumstance valid True. valid time constraints True. in the kind of economy we have definitely and the 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 the, 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 the idea that they should be so involved mm -hmm. to the extent that they are known in the school in community the school. so one other thing i always say people parents friends work with your situation what is your circumstance right now another thing i want to tell you is that what's important to you you're going to make the time for it and the truth is that there are some parents who there's maybe single parent and they just can't make it who else is there can help oh. you 
which friend do you have? There are times, as much as I'm involved in my children's life, I might have a lecture to do, I might have to be working out of town, I'm going to have a trusted friend that's going to be at the PTA, or my husband is going to be there. If he can't be there, somebody is going to get me the information. But what you, you focus on what is important. You and know. you know, the thing too is that no matter how good a teacher is, nobody is more vested in having your children excel than you. So you can't, you can't outsource that? It's hard to outsource it. Because the, the school is partnering with you for your child's correct, development. Correct. But the core responsibility remains with the parents. Sometimes there are parents that take that responsibility to another level do, do, do. and they become what we call the, heli the helicopter oh, parents. Mm. They become so involved, they begin to live vicariously through, through their the children. children. The track and field that they didn't get to do, they're, they, they they're, to do they're doing it through. They have to swim, you have to swim. Co curricular activities mm -hmm. are a must, and the picnic in a dance, and in, in, a, in a spin, in a jump, in a heart, Everything. in a water, in a sky, Everything. in a talk, in a twirl. Everything. Everything. The parent begins to have their dreams come through through their children. Mm -hmm. And now that becomes a little too involved. Yes. Talk to us. And some of the parents who country people that say you're frightened for the picnic. Mm. Too much. Yes. What are some of the warning signs that you might be too invested yes. and that you might be over involved in your child's life as a parent? So motive is important what's your motive mm. was it because i wanted my the father wanted to be a footballer and so him have to go he must go play for jamaica motive mm. the balance is important in terms of sports and core curricular activity it helps with the discipline and it's important but you have to know what is your motive for doing this it's going to be important for that child to have a balance but be careful that you're not living vicariously through those children. And you know what happened to when you're hovering over them mm. and you're Nick Pick and you're in a fuss with teacher, you have to allow those children to develop and grow. Unless if you don't do that, you're going to have to be doing this right up to university. And when it reaches university, it's not cute. Because I said, don't even want you to come on the campus, come hover over, look like mama boy or no. And do you know what they say about the tree? You mm. have to bend it from it, young. Yeah. You have to. So if you wait until too long to, uh, to allow that child to be, develop certain competencies, certain skills to care for themselves, then it's you it turn back around on? It's going to be. It is going to be. You have to. So even though I was very close with my boys because I know they need a little bit more hand-holding, I am going to make sure that the growth and the development mm. is there. Mm. I'm going to. If you could... If you could give advice to parents now yeah. who don't have ideal circumstances. Yes. Uh, we have a society in Jamaica where single parenthood is common. It is. But there are other circumstances that are still even far less ideal. Let's mm -hmm. say unemployment has mm -hmm. happened unexpectedly yes. and I have mouths to feed and children to educate. Or, or um, there might be conflict where I need to care for my children, but I am in conflict, however the conflict may be, whether mm -hmm. domestic conflicts, conflicts with the law, mm -hmm. conflicts with uh, other persons, conflicts in the workplace. Yes. You know, your circumstance to give your best as a parent is not ideal. Mm -hmm. You talk about getting help a lot. Yes. If you could give advice to that parent who has the right motive, yes. has the desire, but has some real challenges, yeah. how, would you, how would you advise? I'll tell you this, as you ask the question, one thing came to mind, you must have a village. You can't do it alone. Mm. You must have a village. So when my boys were at Jamaica College, there were young men who, when I'm on the WhatsApp group for the classroom, I'm very involved. And so there are parents who need help, mm. need guidance. They'll call me one away. If I'm going to have a study group, I am roping them in. It's not about my two sons. It's about how can I help others also. And so you need a village. You need a village. You know what I'm getting from this conversation is that while you are the accountable officer yes. in this circumstance, 
yeah. you are you will be held accountable uh, to a wide extent concerning yes. the positive outcome of this child's development that you can share the responsibility yes that you can co-opt people into your situation yep. to share certain responsibilities. Correct. I'm hearing delegation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're so good at assigning tasks in our jobs, we become project managers. Yeah. And we're not realizing, <laughs> hold on, if I can't go to that game today, mm -hmm. I'm not the worst parent in the world. No, the child is not going to die. And the, the child likes Auntie Sue and Uncle Bob. So give them a call and say hey can you make it to so-and-so's right. match and matter cycle instead of feeling that additional the guilt the, the, guilt. Guilt. the mm. guilt so i'm hearing delegation mm -hmm. having a community sharing the responsibility while staying accountable oh, yes when you think about how you parent your four children you mentioned mm -hmm. your own parents earlier yes um what are two things you think uh younger parents now mm -hmm. uh, need to look out for in terms of how they have to be different mm -hmm. because the times are different. Yes. If, if you could tell, you know, two things to look out for to a, a young mom, she's, mm -hmm. you know, 23, 25, mm -hmm. having her first child yes. in 2023, um, what, would you, what would your advice be in terms of the differences that she should look out for? Okay, so the way how we used to parent years ago, or the way I parented 15 years ago, it can't be the same. You have to understand that each child is unique. Mm -hmm. Do not compare your child with another child. They're at different stage, different levels of maturity, and even when you come to the schoolwork, don't say, look at Mary. So Mary getting mm -hmm. 90s. Why are you coming home with 70s? No, Comparison. you will kill the spirit of that mm -hmm. child. You have to work with your child where your child is. So I'll be, I'll be authentic. My 11-year-old now might not be at the same stage that my, my daughter was before. She, it, it takes a little bit more encouragement working with her working closer with the teacher and i will if she come home with 75 and the highest in the grade was 100 in the class i'm saying elizabeth that was awesome and i continue to encourage her and i'm a woman of faith so i let you know i pray a lot over my children mm -hmm. i remember there was a time when israel used to be afraid to go to school because of an interaction with the teacher when i drop him off i say as you walk in israel say i can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. So a lot of prayer too and working with them just where they're at, mm. just where they're at. Meet them where they are. Meet, meet them where they're at. I, 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 I love that. I want, you to, I want you to, you touched on something, how comparison um, is the thief of joy it really. Is. And it, is so, it, ha, it can have such a debilitating impact on childhood development yes, if parents are like that. But just on a note to say that, um, what should parents ensure that they always do? So whether your child is a baby, whether your child is primary high school or university, mm -hmm. or whether you have adult children, to close out, what would your one piece of advice to a parent mm -hmm. be considering that this responsibility lasts even mm -hmm. um, after the children move into adulthood themselves? The one thing I will tell you, stand by your child and provide every possible emotional, physical and spiritual support. Wow, I love that response and it is an excellent note upon which to end. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to have spoken to you. Sharon Wheat of Redwood was our guest today here at Piccadilly Talks. I want to tell her thanks so much for You're joining welcome. us. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. That's the time we have today, but stay tuned. There is more. Keep watching. And I'm Angelique Berti, your host. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.